This is Krishnan. In 2020, Krishnan took a leap of faith, leaving his high-paying job as an investment banker to work on what he really loved. Idlis. Today, Ayur Idli serves more than 50,000 orders a month. But running a profitable food business hasn't come without its own hurdles. Watch ahead to know all about the Idli King of Bangalore and his mantra behind running a successful business. You really don't need a college degree to run business and manage your finances, okay? Honestly, you don't need a college degree for that. You want someone to learn what life is and learn how to manage money, ask them to run a business. They will learn everything. Like, there is this uh, song uh, in, in the movie called Muttu. It's a Rajnikant movie that came out in the year 1994, if I'm not wrong. It says, Kail konjam kasi mele kasi unaki yajamanam. Which means, you have money for yourself. Yeah, you're the ruler of it. You know how to control it. But when there's more money than what you ha what you require, that will start ruling you. I find that line extremely meaningful. Basic necessities, yeah, I have a car, I have a house, I own a couple of watches. That's it, enough. A lot of people have reached out saying, uh, I want to start a restaurant. First question I ask everyone is like, do you have prior experience in this? 99 out of 100 people tell me no. You see something, you get inspired momentarily and you want to do something like them. 99 out of 100 people say they do not have prior experience. The first thing I tell them is you really want to do something, you need to get a flavor of it. You need to get a taste of it. Work with someone who has a similar business. And once you work, you will get an idea as to how this is, what are the risks involved, how much of effort actually puts in. You should be in a position where if someone's not turned up to work, you should be in a position to do that work. So do you have the enough skill sets to do it? Once you're ready for all of it, yes. And then obviously spend some time to do some research. You know, what kind of a product you're looking at, walk around the area, look at the number of houses, pick a locality that's neither residential nor commercial, somewhere in the mix of both. So you have a mix of a fixed crowd and a floating crowd. People who come on a daily basis and people who come, you know, when they visit the area. You know, look at your competitors, how much business are they getting, uh, what are they offering, see what different you can offer. It all comes down to math. Pricing is not about gut feeling. The price you decide on has to account for the cost of ingredients, labor, operational expenses and a profit margin. Calculating the gross margin value, GMV might help you with this. Ideally, this should be around 60 to 65%. For the longest of time, I think from 2014 to 2021, for like a good seven, seven and a half years, I ensured that the price of each idli in my shop was only rupees 10. Look at it practically also. You think in seven and a half years, things haven't changed? Yes, they definitely changed. Inflation, cost of raw materials, salaries, everything increased in those seven years. But I ensured that I stuck to 10 rupees. You know, it did burn a hole in my pocket. I'm not going to deny that. My, my policy is simple. When someone comes to your place with 20 rupees in their pocket, they should be able to afford something at least. Yeah, they shouldn't go empty stomach. You know, when that thought comes into that person's head, okay, I'm not able to afford food. That day you have failed as a restaurant. Yeah, where do I invest my money? Bank deposits maybe? Because I've seen share prices tumble in a matter of few hours. I find it a bit scary, you know, like it's hard on money at the end of the day, right? So it's okay. Maybe the growth takes time, your money doubles in eight years or whatever it is, it's fine, I'm in no hurry. A food business especially, right, can only succeed if there is consistency in quality. And as an as an owner, you have to be there day in and day out. As simple as customer interaction. Yeah, you like you know. Uh, the way you greet your customer versus how you know your employees might greet your customer is entirely different, right? And in, in the long run, they are extremely, extremely important. People have that perception that, okay, fine, l let me just invest money and I'll expect returns every month from a food business. I think that's probably a very wrong perception and idea that they have because without consistency and quality, you can't sustain. You might probably do well for one month or two months, but trust me, in the long run, Beyond that, it's impossible for anyone to sustain like that. Funny story, as a child, I always wanted a PlayStation Portable, a PSP. And obviously, I couldn't afford it back then, you know. And, I, and probably, I, I know I had the time to play with a PSP back then also. And I couldn't afford it. Believe it or not, a month ago, I bought a PSP. I, I you know, I, I researched a, a guy who sells PSPs in Bangalore. I paid a bomb for it. And I played for like one week, every day I used to play. And now I don't have the time to play. The biggest thing I've always told people, do not put your entire life's earnings into a business. Yeah, If you really want organic growth, I think the key is to take baby steps. Divide your larger goal into smaller, tinier goals. One step at a time, say one outlet in the next one year. That's realistic. Not saying, oh, I will open 100 outlets, I will become a 100 crore turnover business in the next six months. That's practically not possible. Maybe it is, but that's not organic, right? 
that's really not organic and and something that isn't organic isn't going to survive personally i'm not a fan of dine ins you know because one it eats up space takes up time takes up a lot of resources like labor have a simple model like keep your business as simple as possible so that one it's easy for you to run and secondly it doesn't eat up your profit margin profit making is a game of rigorous planning and the most important thing here is to clearly lay down your numbers in general to make a monthly profit margin of around 10% your cost structure will have to look something like this pause the video and take a screenshot once it starts eating up your profit margin your costs go high and at some point of time you have to recover your cost and what do you do to recover your cost you put that end burden on your customer it shouldn't be like only certain class of people can afford this food it's not a supercar it's not like something of that sort only a certain section of society can afford this no food is a fundamental right everyone should get access to good quality food at an affordable price even even a person who who drives an auto or even a person who drives an audi should come to your place it should be the same right? and and that's when your market is huge you just have one life right uh, you can either choose to do the things that you like or sit with regret that oh i wish i had done this uh, i wish i could have done this if you really have a passion and if you really think you can dedicate it you should go for it